Hello and welcome to another episode of Collective Effervescence. As always, I am your host, Los, and I am joined with Luis. What's up, y'all? How are you guys doing? Um, we are finally back with another episode. Um, we do want to say thank you to everyone that has supported us so far. We have finally reached a hundred downloads for the podcast. So that is um, such a huge milestone for us. And that does not include what we have available or what um, the views that we have <clears throat> that we have on YouTube. Okay. Um, and so we're, we're probably around, you know, 20 or 30 views on YouTube. Bow, alone. Bow. So it's some great stuff there. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for joining the community here. And uh, I'm excited to continue this journey and see, you know, what we can do from here. For sure. Yeah. Thank you all for following us this far. Uh, I didn't think we we're going to get to 100 downloads. That was surprising to me, but I'm so excited, so thankful and grateful for all that. Um, and I can't wait to talk about um, today, today's um, episode three. Episode three. Episode yeah. Episode three. So, yeah, let's, let's get into it. All right. We do want to start off the podcast with a little mental health check in ourselves. Um, and so I know Luis just kind of asked me when was the last time that I um, kind of checked in on my own mental health. And I think it was important that we're going to have this conversation. And I think it's important to share with all of you. And, um, you know, we hope to see that you guys start doing this yourselves, whether it's um, daily, you know, weekly or monthly. It's important to have these little check ins so you can know where you are in, in relation to where you um, want to be and, and the growth that you do want to experience. Um, so for me, I think mentally, um, I've been feeling good. Uh, you know, life is, is heading in the, in the direction for me. I think that, you know, I want things to go. Um, there are, there have been a few bumps in the road recently. Um, but that, that still has not been something that has really affected me, affected me like it, it used to. And I think that's something that I'm really grateful for. I've come a long way on my own mental health journey. So there, there have been things that I know in the past, if I experienced it now, would have really broken me down. Um, so to be able to sit and reflect and, and think, wow, I handled that situation a lot better than I, I usually would have, or, um, you know, that, that, you know, situation didn't necessarily get to me like it usually does, uh, was, was a really good thing to, to be able to process and to, to understand. So, um, you know, for me mentally, it's, I'm, I'm feeling good and, it's good to be in this place and it's kind of encouraging for me. And I know I'm at a place where I'm like, where, where can I go next? You know, what can I do to get even better? Because when you're mentally free in a sense of mentally, you know, feel like in a good place, it's, it's a really good feeling. And, um, I don't know. I just kind of feel ready to take on the world, but, uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I'm going to play devil advocate a little <laughs> bit i'm kind of on the opposite spectrum of that i think yeah. these last few weeks have been um it's been exciting to say the least um i mean there's been a lot of changes too so that's cool we'll work wise things are going well um but outside of work um you know typically this time of the year is pretty daunting to me it's just you know gifts for everyone shopping who am I going to spend my who, who am I going to spend the holidays with? How am I going how am I going how am I going to get up to see my family? And it's just like how are, how are we going to split you know the kids and everything? So it's just like usually around this time of the year I'm just like ah. but um, but no I think um, right now I feel good just because we're doing this and this is something I enjoy and brings brings me joy. I look I look forward to it every time we schedule when we're going to record. So um, you know right now. I feel okay, but the last few, few, few days, I can't say the same, but, um, I do know I've come a long way. I have a lot of, I have made a, or have had a lot of accomplishments this year already. Um, I mean, so I'm excited to turn the page to 2022 and kind of see what that's going to bring me and, um, you know, just kind of, just kind of go from there, but you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. That's good, man. It's good to hear. And I think you bring up a really good point. I, you know, the holidays are, are hard for a lot of people. Um, and so being able to manage this time of year and, and work your way through it, it's it's really important. And I think now more than ever is when you when you should really be checking in on your mental health, because, you know, like you said, you're 
pulled in so many different directions with with the holidays and needing to spend time with family but then you have your responsibilities like work or whatever you have going on and then you're like well gifts now i gotta get gifts for people and then well the gifts i'm gonna get are they gonna like it like yeah you kind of go into this whole like panic mode essentially around the holidays so um yeah you know do your check-ins with with yourself and check-ins with the people around you and i think especially with the people around you too and if you can have this sort of conversation with your your friends or your family or the people that you're close with um you know we really have to kind of be here for for one another a lot more around this time so uh, make sure you get your check-ins in and you know if you are doing all right that's great you know keep pushing forward if you're struggling a little bit at this time just you hang are on not alone uh, yeah you are not alone um and just you know let's reach out reach out if you need somebody if you need uh you know somebody to talk to like you said or like we said you know when we first started this we are always here to support anybody that that may need it so feel free to reach out to us anytime yeah i think another thing that's kind of helped me out this week i'm not sure if everyone's seen the movie uh, Shang Chi, but uh, the actor uh, Asimu Liu, he uh, made a comment or he he had a speech. He 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 won an award recently. I forget what it was for, but he said, um, "You know, give yourself permission." And I've been like, "Bro, like hell yeah, give yourself permission." Like yep. so, um, you know, the the other night I was taking a shower, you know, doing my thing, and I'm just like, you know, I I give myself the permission to feel the way that I do because. Mm-hmm. I think the holidays bring um, just the end of the year just brings a lot of pressure to everyone because or to me specifically, I'll, I'll talk about myself because I'm evaluating, OK, what, what did I accomplish? Did I get everything done? That I needed to get done. Um, you know, the holidays are coming up and it just feels a lot of pressure pulling from every direction, from work, from life, you know, from, you know, kids and everything. So it's just like. The end of the year always, to me, brings a lot of pressure because it's just trying to like figure out how am I, how am I going to spend my time, who am I going to see, well, you know, if if I'm if I'm going to be able to go home this year, who am I going to see? Am I going to see you know so and so or this person or that person? You know, um, can I make time for them? And it's just like you know, it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to 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 deal with. But I'm excited. Um, you know, to go into the next year. But yeah, but but, but um, you know. Give yourself that permission to whatever, whatever it is to feel a certain way, to go after whatever goal you're trying to go after or whatever. Just give yourself that permission to do so. I think once you do that, it's an empowering feeling. Oh, it 100 percent is. And um, so I was watching the People's Choice Awards That's the other day. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I saw him, him win the award. I saw his speech and. Man, just thinking about it, I get kind of teary eyed and just kind of feel emotional about it. But just giving yourself the permission to just feel what you're feeling, give yourself the permission to go after your dreams, to do whatever you want. And I think we don't realize that as much. And, and it'll, this kind of leads into the topic that we want to get into a little bit here. But, um, you know, if there's something that you want to achieve in life, or there's something that you want to do, um, always well first of all you know believe in yourself but give yourself that permission to go out and do it to make the changes in your life to do whatever you have to to pursue what you want to do and i think it's it's so important to really give yourself that permission because you know so many times we feel like oh you know maybe i shouldn't do this because it's it's not what society tells me to do it's not what my family thinks i should do um and so giving yourself that sort of permission first will really kind of give you that strength and that courage to really, you know, overcome any obstacles that you might kind of run into later on in the process. But it it starts with that permission. If you don't allow yourself to feel, if you don't allow yourself to go after your dreams, to do what you want to do, you're not going to get very far. And it just starts with you and, and taking that first step there. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, I think that is empowering. It does start with you. And it's just like, you know, the only person that's really going to hold you back is yourself. I mean, you could blame it on, you know, your girlfriend, your friends, your family, whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, you make the decision to do 
what you're going to do in life and just in general, you, you make your own decisions. I mean, so it's just like, I know, um, I mean, so topic of, uh, of the day is mental health with family and friends. So that's, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. But mm -hmm. I think it's kind of starts with your family as well. And it's just like, you know, were you given the power to make your own decisions? And if so, when was it? I mean, so I think, I think a lot of us kind of feel like, we didn't have that or we didn't have that support um, or, or, or we didn't have, um, yeah, we didn't have a support system to, you know, fully go after what it was you're going after. It can be, can maybe you're, you know, you know, so, uh, someone in your family said, oh, well, you're, there's not a lot of money in this. There's not a lot mm -hmm. of money in that. So you shouldn't pursue it. And I think that's what um, keeps a lot of people from pursuing things like, you know, singing art or one, but, 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 well, not singing, but art and like, you know, yeah. just, just things like that. I mean, cause I've, you know, I, I've, I've heard, you know, p stories of p p people saying, oh yeah, well, my dad said there's, there's not a lot of money in it, so I'm, I'm not going to do it or, or whatever. So it's just like, you know, I, I think that's kind of, it's kind of sad because it's, you're letting somebody else, you know, live your life for you because mm -hmm. They think a certain thing doesn't mean, oh, well, it's my dad. So I, ha I have to go along with what he says. And it's just like, no, you don't you don't have to do that. I mean, yeah. maybe as like, you know, I, I believe probably until until the age of like 10. Sure. Yeah. Do it. Do whatever your parents say. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, for me, my parents kind of they're more of a laissez faire, I would say. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just like here are the baseline rules. You know, do, you know, just don't just just don't do these things, you know, yeah. go, go out, sneak out, whatever. But it's just like, you know, you can make your own decisions for the most part. I wasn't making like CEO decisions at the age of 10, <laughs> but it's just like, you know, it was uh, for the most part, you know, I was able to do things, spend the night at friends' houses or whatever. And, um, you know, so it's just like, you know, uh, when it came to, to making decisions, like, oh, what sport do you want to play or do you want to play sports or um, you know, what electives you want. They were pretty, pretty supportive for the most part for, for everything. I mean, uh, um, I wanted to play football, so they let me. And so that was cool. Like my brothers played and stuff. So that kind of went into the family and um, yeah, they just gave me the, the, the decision to, uh, or the, the, the power to make that decision for myself. And um, you know, for me with my kids, um, you know, we put my son in soccer this year. He's four. Well, he was three at the time. That was a mistake. Um, he was just like, <laughs> you know, just just now he was he wasn't into it. He was, he was, he was yeah. three. I mean, so I had zero expectations. So we ended up um, just like, you know, just call calling it what it was. But you know what? Maybe it's not for him. We'll put him in next year or the year after. Mm -hmm. Depends on what, on what he wants to do. I mean, so I think, you know, when, when it comes to this, I think I think that's more of the, uh, what I'm trying to say of my, my parents were decisions wise. So if, if, if it was something like sports or like things like that like they weren't like oh what are we having for dinner today son like it wasn't like that but it was just like you know like you know do you, do you want to do you want to play basketball do you want do you want, do you want to play football do you want to do this or whatever i mean so mm -hmm. that's kind of how it was yeah me. i i think it's important to i mean if you to have that power when you're young obviously your parents should be there to offer you some guidance and and maybe some you know sort of advice to kind of help you um, make those decisions along the way, but it should never be to where their voice or their opinion is overpowering, you know, the decision that you want to make, you know, you should always have that, that freedom and that ability to really, you know, take your life in the direction that you want to take it. in. I mean, you are an individual and I think you have to be, respected in that in that in that sense and and really have the confidence and i think you know if you aren't given that power at a young age and aren't given the opportunities to make your own decisions when it comes down to it and when you are put in a in a place where you have to make a decision for yourself you're not going to be able to and i've been in that situation sometimes where it's like i have to make this really hard decision but for one, I don't know how to make it. I don't have the confidence in myself to make, you know, a big decision. Right. And that's something obviously, you know, I had to, to learn along the way. But um, I don't know. I think it, it's it, you have to have a little bit of a mixture of both. I feel like 
you know, you have to be able to have someone to give you advice, but sound advice and not advice that is overbearing or controlling to the point of, okay, they're just talking you out of it or, you know, putting their foot down and now you can't even make that decision. Um, so I think, you know, having that good mix, but having the opportunities to have your own independence and make your decisions and, um, you know, if that's not something that you had the opportunity to do at a young age, take it, take those steps now, you know, like start making decisions for yourself and because of yourself, you should never make a decision for somebody else or, or for anybody else. Um, so you should really, I don't know, just, yeah, I feel like I'm rambling on a little bit here, but I think it's, it's, it's overlooked how important it is to have that that power and the bill and the ability to make your own decisions and then have that support along with it. Um, you know, I, I think unfortunately with family, sometimes, uh, I, I can talk for myself a little bit here. Um, I'm going to be making a big decision here soon. Um, I'm, I've been living with my family for, uh, the majority of this year here, just, uh, saving up and working and depending on what opportunities come my way, I may be, you know, moving at the house or moving to a different, you know, location. Um, so I, you know, kind of talked to my family a little bit about it. And I know some of them weren't super excited about me kind of making that decision and maybe didn't think it was the best at the time where they have their own reservations, which is fine. Like, I totally get that you maybe, you know, want something else for my life or you maybe want me closer to home or whatever. I get that. But um, it's always important for at least for me, I'm able to see that and acknowledge it and then you know, establish like a boundary of like, okay, I know what your opinion is. Thank you for sharing that yeah, with me, thanks. but I'm still going to have to make the decision for me because of me. And because this is the, the direction I want to take my life in, you know? Yeah. I think what you're trying to say is like, you have to unlearn things. I yeah. mean, so that's kind of a, you know, that's what my therapist has said. You know, you, you need to unlearn how you've been going about your life or whatever. Not that I've been going down the wrong path or anything, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, when certain situations come up, you, you know, I think you automatically just go back to, oh, when I was a kid and how, how did this get solved mm-hmm. or whatever. So it's just like, you need to unlearn those things so you could have a full life and have um, a, a fulfilling life um, as well. So, um, you know, you were talking about uh, moving out. I think that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when I moved out of my parents' house, what, seven years ago, it's been a while, but, um, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a go to school and my parents, you know, they weren't, they were, they're, they're like, oh, you know, like there's no guarantees of getting a degree and this and that. There's a lot of debt and whatever. I was like, yeah, you know, thanks for the opinion. I appreciate it, mm-hmm. but I'm doing it. So and it was like the scariest, saddest thing or decision I've I, I've had to make, but you know I'm glad I did. Uh, I went to school and I met you know my girlfriend at the time. We had our kid and stuff, so you know it led to that. So mm-hmm. you know so that was cool. And then um, you know moving out on my own after we had broken up and stuff, that was a big thing to do too. Scary, you know, be on your own again. But you know, I think I've grown into my own space here. Um, put put up, you know, you know, put up my own. You know, just just made it my own. You know, I'm, I plan to do more furniture wise, but you know, but it's just like you know, it's that decision is not an easy one. But yeah. it's, but it's just like you have to give yourself the power to make that decision, and no matter what anybody says, you mm-hmm. have to do what's best for you, and you have to. So kudos to you for that, yeah, and I hope man. everything works out well. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I think the I think the first question of the topic that we have written down here is. What does family mean to you? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's an important thing to discuss. And I think there's a very, um, I think that when you're young, I think your family is obviously your, your relatives, your mom, your dad, your siblings, and your grandparents and stuff like that. Um, but for me, my fa- my, at least, you know, my definition of family <laughs> I crack myself up thinking about it because I always think of Vin Diesel from Fast and the Furious. Just family, family. Yeah. family. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, for me, it's 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 family more of the, the people that I'm related to. I mean, yes, they will always be my family. But I think family also is um, the people that I had, you know, the strongest connections with in my in my surroundings. Um, and I, I think it's 
family is your biggest support group. Um, the people that you have the strongest bond with and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that, that would be it for me. I think it's, it's just your biggest support group and, and the people that you are most strongly connected with. Um, and I think it's important to have a family or have that sort of support group outside of your relatives because your relatives are not always the best family members for you or the best people for you in your, your inner circle and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think it's, it's, it's important to have that distinction because at the end of the day, it's like, you may be related to someone, but I mean, are, are they, I mean, we're all people, we're all individuals and, and some people get along with people better than others. And, um, I, I think that sometimes with family, we tend to, to lose sight of that. It's, you know, you were kind of telling this, saying this earlier, it's, you know, society and, and the way we kind of grew up, it's, you're forced to just settle with who your relatives are, who your family is. And obviously you can't always pick and choose who your family is, but you should never put yourself in a, in a, in a situation to just kind of put up with them or settle with them, especially when it's not favoring you. But, um, and yeah, I know I just kind of going a little bit ahead of myself here, but, um, I, I, don't, I don't for me family is is the people that you have the the strongest connections with and um i know i know a lot of people that really aren't close to their their blood relatives or their parents or their siblings but they they have a family and it's their friends or their co-workers and stuff like that and and that's a really really you know beautiful thing to have is a connection outside of of your of your you know your bloodline so I mean, what, what do you think? What do you like for you? Like, what is family? Um, my thing is, yeah, it's the people that are clo- closest to you. So whether that be your, you know, your biological family, or whether that be you know your, um, you know, your best friends or whatever. Like, I have a c- 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 couple friends I consider family. I mean, I've I've known one of them for almost twenty twenty one years now. It's been forever, <laughs> and um, and I have another friend who I've known for the past few, a few years, and he was the first friend I made. I made out here, and it was just like, yeah, like, like to to me, you know, that's that's family too, because mm-hmm. it's just like we just share a bond that you know is um you know it's a it's a pretty it's a pr- pretty strong bond. I would say unbreakable even just because you know just a testament to my friendship to my buddy even friends since fifth grade. I mean, since, since since we're like ten years old, and it was funny because we, you know, we 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 both came from, we both moved to Tracy from San Jose. Um, we had uh, he was the new kid in class. We got paired together, and it was just like you know we we had a project to do, and like, oh Luis, you get the new guy, and I was like, okay, whatever, new school. Yeah. And then you know I find out he lives around the corner, and after that, you know the rest is the rest is history. I mean, yeah. so it's just like you know, um, I think. Um, yeah, family is who you're closest to. Of course, you know, I have my, my parents and my, and and my brothers and my, you know, my kids and stuff. I mean, so, you know, so to me, you know, that's, that's family is who, is who you're closest to, um, is, it's, is who's like in, in your circle, I guess you could say Mm -hmm. too. And who, um, you know, who's there, who's there for support. Everyone else is just kind of, you know, they're just there. (laughs) <laughs> acquaintances yeah, uh, yeah colleagues yeah i mean but, but um nah. yeah but but for the most part i think yeah the definition of family is like who you have that who you have that bond with mm-hmm. and i think it's a and it's it's an important distinction to make and i think it's when you really start to break down what family is for you and I mean, family to one person is not going to mean the same thing to everybody else so it, there's no real um, like blanket definition for, for what family really is. And I think it's important for you to make that own distinction for yourself because you then give yourself the power to choose who you want to include in your family. And I think um, it's, it's an important thing to, to do. It's you have to surround yourself with people that are going to be good for you, good for your mental health, good for, um, you know, what you want to do in life and i think if you have that solid support group and you kind of distance yourself and set boundaries with the people that maybe don't serve you the best i I think you'll you'll see a lot of improvement in in your life and and the things that you'll be able to achieve i know i've definitely had to do that myself um with some family members but uh i don't know it's 
it, you have to you have to give yourself the opportunity to really you know establish who you want in your life what role they play in your life mm -hmm. and i kind of hate saying it that way um but yeah I, I it's it's important to to make sure that you have you, you have that power within yourself to establish like you know what connections you want to have and um i think this is kind of going into our next topic here is what effects can your family have on your mental health um and obviously there's we've been kind of diving into this but the negative effects you know if you have people that aren't necessarily serving you or um good for you and your mental health and and your happiness and and what you want to do you know there it it could be pretty damaging to you and you know i think having individuals around you that are detrimental to who you are and and your own mental state is a lot more damaging and it could create a more toxic environment or even um I mean, I don't really know what I'm, I, I think it's, I don't know. What do you feel? Um, I kind of feel like if you're around people that are, um, that are toxic or have a negative effect on your environment, it becomes a snowball effect. So kind of, mm -hmm. so it starts off, of course, um, you know, you and that, in that, in that person. So say it's like, I don't know, like you're your mom or something. So you have, you have a, a negative mom who, who's not supportive, who, um, you know, talks down to you or whatever. So you're, you're, you're going to take that relationship and every other relationship that you try to cultivate, that's going to be a part of it one way or the other. So either you're, you're going to, um, project that onto them. So it's, if, if you're getting into a relationship, a relationship with somebody, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, um, you know, there, there, there is a chance that that toxicity that you learned from your mom or whoever, just whoever in, in your family or, or your, or who, whoever was closest to you. And if it was toxic, that's going to project onto them. So it's just like, even if you had a toxic relationship before, mm -hmm. that's going to project into the next one, unless you take the time to, first of all, heal. I think a lot of people don't take the time to heal. I think, um, some people where, you know, if they get hurt in a relationship, well, I, oh, well, the best thing to do is to get into another relationship. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. no, it's not. You have to, you have to stop a little bit and think, okay, like, you know, with my relationship personally, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like horrible or anything, but it just, just didn't work. But it's just like, at the end of the day, like afterwards, I was like, okay, hey, when, what I knew was like, for sure, for sure done. It was just like, all right, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What did I not like? And then this is kind of, you know, I've been single for a while. You take the time to, he to heal from that. So it's just like, so um, I think it's just, it's the same thing with, with family and stuff. And it's just like society says your family is your family. It is what it is. You can't change them. Okay. That's true. People are who they are. You can't cha change them. But just because someone is, you know, is your mom or your dad or brother or sister does not mean they have the right to be in your life you have the right to choose that. So it's just yeah. like if somebody, if you feel somebody is that is, it could be a family or friend or whatever, somebody is that's detrimental to your mental health and they're giving you anxiety or whatever. They talk down to you. They don't make you feel good. That's going to kill your whole vibe. So you yeah. have, you should have the choice to be like, you know what? I'm just going to distance myself from this person. Therefore, you know, I don't have to deal with this negativity anymore and it will kind of clear up some of that toxicity that I'm talking about. So it's just mm -hmm. like, I think, um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's kind of what, what everybody should, I should do really. I mean, because I don't think, I don't think anybody has the perfect functional TV sitcom family. <laughs> I mean, because that just does not exist. That doesn't <laughs> exist. And it's cool to watch shows like, you know, Full House or Roseanne or whatever. Oh, this is funny mm -hmm. because it's dysfunctional and it feels, you know, it feels, you know, um, familiar because maybe that's how yeah. your home life is. But it's just like, but at the same time, there are shows that are out there that are just like, this is what family is supposed to be. You work through things and you didn't like, no, no, no. Like, actually, you know, people hold grudges. People will stop talking to you. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just like, you know, it's not just like, Oh, hey, Mr. Winslow, like, I'm sorry I said this or whatever, dad. And they're like, oh, cool. Thank you, son, for saying that. We could get along great. And that's just not how it is. I mean, yeah, it's how no. it should be, ideally. But in all honesty, I highly doubt 
that there's any family out there. And if there is, kudos to you. Can I join? Yeah. Are you looking for another son? Yeah. I love you, mom. No. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, it's just like that 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 doesn't exist. You have mm-hmm. you have to make a choice like, hey, if, you know, if you if you have someone in your life that's constantly just shitting on you or making you feel small or making you feel less of a person or whatever, you should be able to be like, you know what? Bye. Cut off. Yeah. That, that was me cutting that off. That was that sound was. <laughs> it's just like I'm cutting you out. Like I don't I don't need this and I don't need that. And it's just like I think once you start to distance yourself from from people, I think the better you're gonna feel overall because mm-hmm. a lot of times especially if it's like a family member and it's just like oh man it's scary it is it's hard to do i mean i i don't think i've done it i don't think i've cut anybody out of my family or anything but it's just mm-hmm. like there are people i don't don't talk to anymore and it's just yeah. like you know is what it is distance you know things happen or whatever and it's just like all right not that they were that you know toxic or anything it's just we don't talk but it's just like i think that it is hard to make that decision to walk away and but you know what like you know this isn't for me. I don't want to be around this person anymore. You know, then you could kind of have that, that if you want to have that conversation, like, Hey, look, you know, I, I don't think you're good for my mental health. You give me anxiety. You stress me out. You're toxic. I'm walking away yeah. um, until, until, you know, if you, if you see that and you want to make a change or whatever, hit me up. But for now, you know, we're done. I think, I think that's what a lot of people should do. Um, because just from, just from, from, from what I've heard personally from my friends and stuff and saying, yo, I, I this person in my life is this like, damn, you, you should just walk away. Well, yeah. I can't, Like that's, you know, that's my mom or that's my dad. Like, so who cares? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, they give you life and stuff. Great. Thank you. But it's just like, but that doesn't give you the right to constantly sh- shit on me, question all my decisions yeah. or whatever. I mean, yeah, you, you should be able to be like, you know what? You're, you know, bye. I'm, bye. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I mean, so yeah, it's easier said than done for sure. No, definitely. I think it's important that we talk about how to, you know, establish those boundaries or really step away. It's if you have the ability to have that conversation and you just say, hey, look, this is the effect that you have on my life. And I want to make you aware of that. And I can't continue this way. So unless things change unless you know you you treat me better or um you know you or we i don't i don't know if there's if there's some sort of change that could be made to better the relationship i think it's hey let's because sometimes i think it's important to have that conversation because sometimes people are oblivious to how like the, the trauma or the harm they cause and so i think if if you can at least get to that first step of like, hey, you know, I think we need to talk. This is the effect that you are having on my life. And this is why I feel this way. And I think from that point, either they take it in and they're like, oh, wow. OK, thank you for sharing that with me. Then, you know, this is some action steps. Here's how, 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 you know, how can I get better? You know, what can I do to not have that effect on you anymore? And I think if, if that is what comes out of the conversation, great. But sometimes people aren't always going to be receptive of that fight you on it yeah and they're like and and i mean just think about it I, no one really likes to be called out or or um told that they are you know having a negative effect on somebody else because no one really wants to to be in that sort of situation yeah. but when you also when someone is also put in a situation where like it's their their per their character when you are like you know putting their character in the in the fire and it's really be like hey like you're bad for me. There, that's not always easy to take. So some people won't be receptive to that. And if you kind of run into that conversation there, establish a boundary. You're like, okay, you know, just try to keep, try to keep the conversation cool. If you can, you know, don't let it escalate even more just because it'll, um, only be more harmful to you and to the situation. But I think it's important to, to at least if you can have that conversation and if they're receptive to it, great, you know, try to build from that. But if they're not, or maybe it was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll change or I'll get better. And it just kind of goes back to the same trauma and the same um, negative effect on your life. Step away. Take a step back. And it doesn't have to be something that they consent to or whatever. It's it's something that you have to do for yourself. It's a boundary that you're creating. And then that person then has to go and respect it. 
Yeah, I don't think it has to be like a whole big cinematic thing either. It could just be like <laughs> crying in the rain. Yeah, sad yeah. Music. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it could just be like you know what, like um, you know, there there have been times where I've had friends tell me like, hey, you made me feel a certain way, or you made me feel uncomfortable, or you said this and made me think that. Like, well, mm-hmm. like, oh, 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 those weren't my intentions. Yeah, I sincerely apologize. Like, that was not what I meant, or at all, or mm-hmm. or, or, or whatever it was. I mean, so for me, there has, there have been times. Even my own relationship, that was was just like, you're making me feel this, this, and this. I'm like, oh shit, I am sorry, I didn't mean that at all. Yeah. Even my kids, you know, like oh, like you know, you make me feel like, I don't know, whatever. I mean, I yell sometimes, so I mean, but but it's just like, but they're like, you know, you maybe, uh, I think, you know, you make me feel like I can't do anything right. Like, oh shit, like that is not what I want at all. That's mm-hmm. the last thing I want to hear from my kids. I mean, so it's just like, you know, it's. You have to be able to take that criticism and be like, oh, shit, like I'm affecting someone's life negatively. Yeah. But then at the same time, there are a lot of narcissistic people out there that are just like, no, 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 it's just you. You know, you're you're uh, you know, you're weak or you're weak minded mm-hmm. or you just can't handle me or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, that's just how I am. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So I mean, and it's just like I don't know, to me, if somebody says that to you, that's just how I am. Like, peace out. Like, yeah. done. If I've already come to you and said, yeah, I don't like this, this, and this, or whatever, it is what it is. That, that's who I am. Like, oh, mm-hmm. bye. All I'm right. Done talking enough. to you. Yeah. I mean, so it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of p- people throughout my life that, I, that I've known. It's just like, you know, um, you know, you kind of either see that they're t- toxic in a way where they only hit you up when they need something or, the, or, or, or they're feeling some type of way. And you're like the only person that they, they can think of it. Like, oh, this person's like, Luis is going to be there to accept me or whatever. Yeah. And then, yeah. Cause that's the kind of person I am. Come tell me whatever. And then after that, okay, fuck off. I'm done with you. So it's just like, <laughs> there are a lot of people in my life that have done that. And I'm just like, yeah. so I see that as a pattern. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'm not talking to you anymore because mm-hmm. all you want for me is, this but then if i come to you for something it's like oh this is too much you're asking a lot and it's mm-hmm. just like okay that's yeah. how it's gonna be all right i mean so it's just like you can't when there's a negative toxic person in your life you can't feel shameful for just being like i'm out even though if it's a narcissistic person they're gonna shame you because that's yeah. just how they roll that's just mm-hmm. how that's They're like, never the the problem. It's right. always this is the prime definition of a narcissistic person. It's just like Mm-mm, this is your fault mm-hmm. because you think this. That's on you. And yeah. it's just like, and I've dealt with those p- people too. I'm just like, ugh, I don't like that. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> so, it's terrible. I mean, I so I have a. I'm not gonna name who, but I have a couple of family members that they are never wrong. They will never apologize, and it's never them. It's never the problem. They always have a. Uh, ton of different reasons for for why they did something or why and it's just excuses upon ex- excuses um and they're really difficult to deal with and um they're very opinionated mm-hmm. and they're gonna let you know their opinion and and their opinion is is right yep and anything that's different from that is nope you're wrong mm-hmm. i'm right mm-hmm. fuck you <laughs> yeah and like that's not always the case and so it's I'm still trying to learn how to distance myself from from those family members. But um, at the end of the day, too, it's it's how much respect do you have for yourself? Like, what are you willing to put up with? You know, and and at some point you really have to just draw the line. And, um, you know, it it's you have to be able to to or be willing to make the changes in your life that that are going to be best suited for you and if you have to remove people and set those boundaries then then do it give yourself we'll take it back to the what we were saying earlier give yourself that permission to to you know really establish those boundaries because it's i mean it's 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 unfair to you it's unfair to yourself to to be around people that are just so hurtful to you or toxic or negative all the time I mean, if you are in a negative space, your, your body's gonna feed off that, and your mind is gonna feed off that, and then you find yourself kind of turning out like them a little bit. You start to become that negative person. You start to think negatively all the time, and so you really have to, you know, be able to put yourself in a position to just step back and and say enough is enough at times. And it's it's a hard decision to it make, is, yeah. But um, you you have to you, you set yourself free for sure. 
it is such a freeing feeling once you realize like it's like I don't know like I have I've had jobs where people are just just negative about everything there's always something to say and it's just like fuck but then you but then you kind of get so involved with it you don't see it you're, you just become part of it then yeah so i i've I, i've had a job recently where I, it's just like everyone was just like i hate this job this sucks and this and that and then it's just like you know sw- um then when i switched to to different one it's just like oh it's not that bad. that was just people being negative like <laughs> that's not what it is at all but like, okay like yeah all right i mean so it's it's just like once you kind of take that step back and you kind of reflect and you realize like, oh shit like the environment wasn't bad it was just the people in it mm-hmm. and it's just like you know once once you get to that point you're like, all right cool like i removed myself from that situation and now i feel like 10 times better yeah but it's just like i think this c- just doesn't apply to family just to, to family in general it's friends relationships yeah. i know uh, people in relationships where they have a toxic partner where their mm-hmm. partner is like you know they they were in a traumatic either relationship with their parents or their old spouse or boyfriend girlfriend whatever and it comes back to you and you're like i am not them i mean mm-hmm. so it's just like you know but it's just like you have to make that decision too like hey you know if you i mean if you're listening and you're, you're in a relationship right now and if you feel like your partner isn't you know, isn't good for your, isn't good for your mental health, isn't good for your vibe, isn't good for your, you know, um, what's that? So is it aura? You know, that. I mean, it's just like, That's you know, important. if, if you don't feel that, that this person doesn't mesh with all that, cut them loose. It's just like, all yeah. right, well, nothing against you. It's just, this isn't working out. I don't, mm-hmm. I, don't I don't feel this could go on anymore. You're not good for my mental. You don't have to say you're not good for me. It's just like you know, it's just this. This isn't good for my for my mental health or whatever, whatever it is. But it's like if you you need to when you're in a relationship with anybody, family, friends, um, you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. It's just like you need to think about that and think about is this person good for my for my mental health? Because yeah. like I'm around them, I'm around them every day, all the time, talk to them all the time. They're always around, and it's just like, you know you could choose to remove them from your environment if you want to but it, it is hard trust me yeah it is super difficult and it's probably like one of you know you're you know even if it's a good decision you're gonna feel like shit afterwards because you potentially hurt someone or whatever and it's mm-hmm. just like you have to do what's right for you if, if someone else gets hurt in the balance because they are making you feel a certain way and they get hurt okay sorry but it's just like at, at some point you have to put yourself first and have your own self-respect and be like you know what like enough's enough I respect myself too much to let this person talk to me this way or to, mm-hmm. let to or to carry on this relationship or to carry on this friendship. Like I, I love myself too much to bring myself down to this person's level yeah. and just stay there and be there punching back or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I think, you know, you have to make that decision. And I think too, it's how much are you willing to take and, and for how long and, there's gonna be a moment if you let it go for too long where it's gonna explode gonna snap. and it's gonna get ugly because you allowed yourself to stay in it for too long i mean you, there's countless times where you see it's i mean it's i you know i don't want to go down this road too much but you see um people that just put up with partners or friends or whatever for too long and like you said, they snap and something terrible happens or something terrible happened to them because they didn't step away when it was time to step away. You know, and it's it's a very hard decision. And sometimes if you are in a in a relationship or have a certain family member that maybe like if you, you, you know, you're going to be threatened if you try to take that that step away. Well, then that's when you really know, OK, I got to go. Mm-hmm. And if you got to, you know, distance yourself or do whatever you have to to step away from from that toxic environment in that relationship, do it. I mean, you hear it all the time you could fill up a water bottle with a bunch of rocks. But at some point you're going to reach the top and there's no more that's you know, it's not going to be able to fit anymore. To be honest, I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> it just kind of that's the yeah, only thing yeah. I can think of. Yeah, but sure. I, I mean, at some point you're not going to be able to take any more in. And it's there. It's there's so many terrible things that could happen, but we just 
want to make, we just avoid it. Avoid going down that path because that is ultimately the only path that'll come out of that, that relationship or that friendship, unless you take the steps to really either fix it or separate yourself for your own safety. Yeah. And, and I think when it comes to safety, it's like your, your, your physical and your, and your, and your mental safety. I mean, so it's just like, if you know, someone's not good for your environment, it's just like, you know, you just got to step away and get out of it. I mean, so it's just like, you know, just because uh, somebody is like your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, or whatever, at some point, they can't just talk to you however that they want. They, mm-hmm. if, if they're talking down to you, it's, oh, you know, you can't, you can't do this. You can't satisfy me or whatever. And it's just like, okay, bye. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's just like, you know, it's, it's, you have, to, you have to make that decision or else it just comes to, I don't know. It's just something crazy. I don't know. Like any, anything could happen with anybody, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, this world's, as we all have seen lately, or just forever. It's, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's a crazy fucking world out there. It's wild. No, it really is. I mean, so it's just like you know, it's just like you have to. I think what we're trying to say is you have to be able to step back, reflect on all your relationships at, at some point, and be like, is this good for me? Mm-hmm. And if it's not, what steps can you make? to make it better for you. You, you either, you call this, you, you talk to this person, Hey, I'm feeling a certain way because you said this and that. Oh, okay. Or, or and you, and you, you kind of go from there. You, 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 uh, you, you bring up the situation, acknowledge it. Hey, this is what's happening. But if nothing changes on that person's end, the youth that, that you need to change, that you need to see, then that's when you, okay, cool. I can walk away now because yeah. I put everything I could into it. I'm not getting the same effort back or whatever. I'm out. Or that same respect back, you know? Um, and, and I think, too, it's, I mean, life is, I, at least, you know, f- for me and the, the kind of perspective that I really have, it's life, life can be short. It's as precious. It's, it's such a gift to be able to be here, to be alive. And you really have to just make, make the best out of it. Don't waste any time that you have. Just just take control of your life and take control of the people that you have in your life because that is a decision you can make and you have that power. And I think some some people don't maybe realize that or have the courage in themselves to to know, hey, I can I can pick and choose who I want in my life. Yeah. And if you're not good for me. Then I'm stepping away, right? Because this is what's best for me and my life, mm-hmm. and and you really have to do what you can to make your environment as comfortable and as as good for you as you can. Now, it's not always going to be like that. There's always going to be challenges and obstacles, and there's going to be times where you have to learn and grow yourself, or learn and grow with somebody else. But if you are in a in a space where you can say hey you know what you're not good for me i have to make this decision that's it do it Mm -hmm. because if you continue to just let it build up and build up and build up i mean it's our if it's already bad now just know it's gonna get worse (laughs) and just the thought of that alone should should be like okay no i gotta go if this is bad now and i continue to let it get down this way it's gonna get worse how much worse are you willing to let it go? Right. To let it get, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, yeah, at some point you have to, to realize you have to love yourself and respect yourself first. So mm-hmm. a lot of people struggle with that. I do. I do. Yeah. I, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, I love myself every day. I don't. I mean, so it's just like, I need to learn to get to that point. So I have that love for myself and respect myself for I start to be like, okay, this isn't working for me. I need to leave this, 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 this environment, whatever, whatever it is, if it's a family, friends, someone you're trying to talk to relationships, whatever. It's just like, if it's not, if it's not working for you and it's not, um, you know, positive, it's not giving you positive vibes. It's not, it's not, it's, you know, it's not going to benefit you at all. Then you should just walk away. Mm-hmm. I think I want to talk a little bit too about some of the positive things of, of family. You oh, know, yeah. I don't want to, just sit here and just shit on family all the time. Easy. Like, Your Talk family yeah. sucks <laughs> and they're terrible. No, that's not what I want to do. Um, I think if you have the right people around you and are, you know, 
have people that actually care for your well-being and are supportive that itself could be really good for you like i i um like as i was saying earlier so i have a couple of decisions i'm going to be making here soon about the direction i want to take my life in. and then i have some family members that are skeptical and hesitant about me making that decision i can tell and i have others that are really encouraging and really supportive and um you know, when I was kind of talking to them about some of the things that I want to do, they were getting excited for me and they're like, oh, OK, all right, we can do this and you can do that. You know, thinking of ways of how they could help me get to that destination. And that is so powerful to have somebody that just you are can have that open communication with to say, hey, this is what I want to do. These are the opportunities that are coming my way. I'm thinking about making this decision and to have somebody come right behind you and just let's go let's do it how can we get you there to give you that support i mean that is that i mean that, what more could you ask for yeah, out for of sure. out of your family you yeah. know it's, it's such a great feeling and um it just kind of makes you feel more secured in making that decision when you know you have somebody that is like kind of right behind you giving you that support and encouragement that that is something that helps build up that confidence in yourself it allows you to have that power so maybe when you don't have them around anymore or when you are in a different space or living somewhere else and you don't you want or maybe around them now with technology you can really you know communicate yeah, at yeah, any right. moment it's just yeah. instant so you do have that opportunity but sometimes you're gonna have to make decisions on your own and and if you have that past confidence to to hey you know i made a, a big decision before i had this support and I made that decision and things worked out or maybe it didn't, but you, you still have that ability. You still have that confidence in yourself. Like, Hey, I did this. I can do this. Right. And so it's, it just kind of, it builds up. It, it's, it's something that is not just, it's not something that necessarily you're born with or not everybody is born with, but it, it is something that you have to learn. And it's, it's, I mean, it's all learned behavior and, and having that confidence and that power in yourself to be able to make decisions, but then having those people around you, to support you in those decisions is, is really huge for your mental health. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, um, I think um, the last the last few weeks and months or so, like with with my kids, like my son put on his he usually puts his shoes on the wrong foot. He's four. <laughs> I don't expect a lot from him, but you know he you know he put his shoes on right. I'm like, dude, hell yeah, you put yeah. your shoes on the right foot. And he like just lit up like a Christmas tree. He was so excited. Gave him a high five and he was all excited but i put my shoes on and it's just like yeah okay yeah you should put your shoes on but it's like put, put to him to have somebody there to be like oh fuck yeah dude you did that shit and it's yeah. just like you know I, I i just see you know the happiness and, and so you know I, I i try to do that as often as possible like you know he he you know he puts his he doesn't know how to put his, his shirt inside out what it is. I'm like, yeah, dude, you did it. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. And then same with my, uh, same with, with, with my daughter. Like she was doing her math homework the other day. That shit is hard now. Like they have these, <laughs> yeah. these, she's like in third grade, I think. And there's like, I don't know. Multiplication to me was just like, oh, it is what it is. But she was just, no, you have to do that. It's like, what the fuck is that? But then, but then, you know, when she figured it out, I'm like, hell yeah. See, you got it. And she was like lit up all happy. She's like, oh, I'm trying to do this on my own. I was like, cool. I'm eating my wings. So like, you know, if you need help, just let me know. <laughs> but she, you know, she, she was just doing it on her own. She had questions. She asked. And I was like, good, good for you. Like, you mm-hmm. know, if you, if you need help, you ask, I'm here. But yeah. it's just like, I think, um, you know, it's, it's good to have that that positive enforcement that someone is there for you to support you. I mean, with my parents, of course, at first they were like, oh, you know, college is a big thing. But then afterwards, you know, they're like, dude, like you made that decision yourself. Like, I'm so happy for you. And I was like, you are like, yeah, oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> it's just like once you have that, that um, what's it called? Once you have that, that support and that, you know, and you know that somebody's behind you, so you have that that confidence in yourself because they're confident in you. And you're like, oh, cool! Like this, this, this is awesome. I mean, so it's just like, you know, I get, I get that from my parents and my brothers and stuff. And when I brought the podcast, they're all like, oh my god, this is awesome! Like, cool! Like, good for you. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, good for me. This is this is that's great. right. Yeah, yeah, it's a good uh-huh. decision. I mean, so it's just like, 
you know, you have to surround your, you have to find people and surround yourself with people that are like that. I mean, like, you know, um, even, even with your friends and stuff, it's just like every friend I bought from my podcast either, or this podcast either. Oh man, like, that's awesome. That's great. Like, good for you. Awesome. Like, yes, thank you. <laughs> I mean, but it's just like, once you have that support, it's just like, it's, it's unmatched. It's crazy mm-hmm. because, because once you, you, you feel supported and you feel that you have, you know, you just feel that you have that someone has your back, or whatever. You're just like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm invincible. I'm unstoppable. Even if even if you fail at whatever it is, you know, ideally, most likely they're they're gonna be there to pick you up too. I mean, mm-hmm. so it's just like, and that and that's huge. Like with my parents and stuff, with things that, that didn't work out, they're always there for me. I mean, so it's just like I know I could count on them. So it's just. Yeah, it's just it's 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 a nice thing. It's a cool thing. It's dope. Like it's it's yeah. awesome to have that unwavering support, whether it's from your family or your friends. It's just just to have something like, fuck yeah, dude, good for you. And you're just like, hee hee hee. I mean, that's so, right. I did it. Yeah. So it's just like you know, it's just good to have that. And and for me as a parent now, it's just like you know, I know the effect of it because I've seen it. I saw I saw mm-hmm. my kids just like you know lit up like a light. I mean, so it's just yeah. like this is awesome. So so it's just like. I want them to know that no matter what, I'm here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to be here as long, you know, not as long as I can because, you know, whatever. I'm not going <laughs> to get into that. But, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's just like, that's how I am with my friends and stuff. They come to me, oh, I'm going to do this. Fuck yeah, dude. Like, mm-hmm. do that shit. Like, my buddy has a, he has a, a, sh- a shirt printing company. I'm just like, Fuck yeah, bro! Like hell yeah! I yeah. Mean, it's just like I grew up with that guy. I mean, so <laughs> so it's just like you know you have to have you have to if you if you if you're gonna expect that kind of support, you have to be able to give it to you. Oh, I mean, 100%. so it's just like you have to be able to you know to be there for your friends and your family and stuff. And it's just like you know, and if you're not that kind of person, you're not that kind of person. It's whatever. But it's just mm-hmm. like you know, it's just a good feeling to just like encouragement in general. It's just yeah, feeling. it's it's sort of that confirmation that yeah you're kind of doing the right thing or you know and i think a lot of times i know especially for me um whenever i have a decision i tend to tell people just to see what their reaction towards it is to to kind of check if hey am i doing the right thing here Mm -hmm. depending on and to an extent that's it's a good thing to always like get some feedback when you're making decisions from other people maybe they'll give you a different perspective or uh, you know, offer their support, which is always nice. Um, but for me, it's always been, I need the confirmation. I don't have the confidence in myself yet, but I'm getting it from other people because I'm telling them, Hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And they liked it. They liked the idea of that they were encouraging about it. They were happy for me. So it was like, okay, yeah, I can do this. And it's, it's super important to, you know, if you're anything like me and, you, you need to have that encouragement and, and that positive environment and that support group because, I mean, you may you may not make decisions. If they're for me, I would never make a certain decision or it would take forever. I mean, this podcast alone, it took me forever <laughs> to get it going, you know. Yeah. But I finally had to build up that, um, this, that courage within myself and that belief within myself, but it took some support from other people and that encouragement from other people of like, hey, that's a really good idea. Do it. And just, just yeah, go do it. Already, sure. you, know? Yeah. you know, we're waiting. We want to hear it. And yeah. it's just, just having that confirmation. I mean, it goes such a long way. And I think that, um, we should be aware of that too. When other people, you know, ask you about something or ideas that they want to do or tell you something that they want to do, be cautious about how you respond. Even if it's a terrible decision, let them know, but in a nice way and in, in, in a constructive way, uh, because a lot of times when we, you know, people bring up stuff, it's, hey, I need some confirmation. What do you think? I, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Um, I'm just telling you about it because I want to know. So it's important to kind of have that in the back of your head of like, OK, how can I best support this person, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea and, and offer some advice that is positive or, or helpful? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, like, even if someone, you know, if someone just comes to you like, I'm going to be an R&B singer, and you're just like, oh, um, okay, well, awesome, I'll be here <laughs> where whatever happens, mm-hmm. I, I'll, yeah, I'll support you e- e- either way, I mean, so it's just like, 
you know, even though even though you know that person sounds like you know death or whatever, you're <laughs> kind of just like, good luck to you. I'm here for you. When whatever whatever happens, you know, I got your back. I mean, so mm-hmm. it's just like, I think, you know, and and if you're honest enough to be like. Mm, I mean, it's just <laughs> like maybe think of this instead. Yeah. I mean, but it's just like because that's kind of how I am too. I'm just like, do you want my opinion? I'll, I'll give it. I'll to give you. it to you. <laughs> I mean, but if you want me just to be like, yeah, it's a great idea, then then fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, but for the most part, I, I I tend to be like, oh, did you think about this or this and that? Because I get that from my dad. My dad doesn't tell my dad is. Oh, did you think about this? Like, fuck. No, I didn't. I yeah. mean, so it's just But sometimes like, you need that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's just like you you need that that other per, a perspective. You need that, um, you know, which, which is why it's good sometimes, mm-hmm. depending on how your support system is, it's good to tell people, like, you know, this is what I'm thinking of doing or this is what I want to do or whatever. And... Some and maybe you'll get a, a different perspective, or you'll get a different way to achieve that goal than what you were going to originally. So it's just like, you know, it's, it's just good to, uh, you know, to bring it up to your, to your, to your support. I mean, but I think a lot, I, I think a lot of us need that kind of confirmation. That yeah. From whether you know their family, their friends, me. Um, I know I I need that sometimes, which is mm-hmm. you know I'll, I'll bring up something to somebody and I'm just like, oh, what do they think? I need to know what they think. I need, <laughs> or I'm gonna throw up like, tell me please. And then they'll, you know, they'll tell you they should. Yeah. Right? But it's just like, you know, I think at, at some point we all, we all kind of, uh, we all kind of need that, um, that, mm-hmm. that confirmation that, you know, that someone's there and stuff. And for me, I, I learned that, um, you know, this is a little bit off topic, but I learned that like, I get a lot of, uh, you know, the little, when you're, I don't know, um, I'm not gonna bring that up. Yes, I will. Let's yeah, yeah. so it's just it. like <laughs> I get I get a lot of um, not satisfaction, but I get excited when I get like text messages or like I see that little you know DM sign on your Instagram. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, cool, like people like me. But it's just <laughs> like you know, I learned that that's like you know it's probably not the best. You probably shouldn't put your self worth on how many notifications you get. Mm-hmm. So I just I I was just 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 thinking that. Uh, the past few days, I thought it would be good to bring on the podcast, be a little vulnerable from with yeah. myself. It's like, you know, because yeah, there's times where you'll go on your your Snapchat, your Instagram, or you know, your dating profiles, whatever. Oh, I get a message, and if you don't, you're just like, oh, I'm worthless. But it's just like, <laughs> no, it's that's that's you know, that's not the case, and you sh- and you shouldn't put yourself worth, yeah, on a notification mm-hmm. or on something like that. But yeah, I just thought. I have nothing to do with family, but I just thought about it. I was like, "Cause, cause like I was, I was just thinking the, the other day. I was, I was driving into work, and I was just like, "Man, I put a lot of, I put, I, I put a lot of, uh, not emphasis, but a lot of, um, what's it called? A lot of, uh, like a lot of weight on, yeah, on getting yeah, that on that on that confirmation from like social not media, and social the media, and that engagement. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I used to be like. Plus, me, I don't, I don't need it. But it's just like you know, there's times where I'm like, no new notifications, boo, I suck, or whatever. I'm <laughs> yeah. not, or I'm not interesting, or then I start, I start, you know, self uh, destructing. I guess mm-hmm. self, self, self sabotaging. Yeah, I think it's, it's the word. It's just like, oh, I'm boring. I'm not, I'm not interesting, or this and that. But it's just like, mm-hmm. no, I'm not. I'm awesome. Yeah. I, mean, well, <laughs> I, I think what it comes down to too is. Our, our need for human connection you yeah. know we are humans are social beings i mean i i think we talked about this a little bit I, the worst thing the worst form of punishment i mean look if you look at the prison system the worst punishment they could do to somebody is throw them in isolation isolation you are gonna be locked up in this box by yourself yeah. and you won't see anybody or you won't talk to anybody. That is one of the worst forms of punishment that you could do to somebody. Yeah. Like that is crazy. And I think that, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to social media, it can be, it can be an unhealthy thing if used in unhealthy ways and, and used in ways where you have a reliance on it, but it, it serves to connect us. Supposed I think to. yeah, it's supposed to, and so we are more connected now than any generation has ever been. So those things and those the amount of likes you get, the DMs, the messages, the interaction that you have, 
on social media is going to be a really big impact or factor in your life for how you how you are doing in terms of you know am i cool or am i like do people like me you know do people want to talk to me yeah. we put a lot of weight into that because that is one of the the biggest ways that we connect with other people and it can be it can make you feel lonely really fast if yeah. your your shit is not popping off you yeah. don't got notifications from twitter or instagram or snapchat i'm like yeah. man why isn't anybody hitting me up like what's good <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta post something somebody yeah, interact sure, with me i need that sure. sort of support and somebody connect with me you know yeah. it's yeah go ahead no i was gonna say it's wild because um i don't know if you've seen the show um this is we're going totally off topic now but i don't know if you've seen the show uh black mirror i don't know if you've uh, seen yeah, that black mirror is wild yeah, <laughs> but i think one of the first episodes i saw was a social media one. They were mm -hmm. like that. That was like a currency thing, and I remember watching this like it was like five or six years ago with 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 uh, you know, no matter. I was watching it like five or six years ago, and I was like, holy shit! Like, what if this happens? And and this is our real currency. Like, that's wild. And it kind of is now. I think yeah. I think especially now with the pandemic and stuff, and people are you know they're more isolated, and I don't know. There's gonna be another quarantine or whatever. But it's just like you know. I think a lot of people, me myself at, at times, have put a lot of emphasis on social media and be like, am I loved? And it's just like, no. I mean, no, no, no. It's not, no, 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 like, no, you're not. But it's like, no, your your self worth and love should not come mm -hmm. from social media. Like, uh, and you know, there there are a lot of people that are that are successful. Like, you know, they, I, I have this million dollar house i have you know, all these cars and this and that and blah, blah blah but it's just like you know i think a lot of times too and i've seen i've heard it in movies i've heard it in quotes i've seen it like you know some of the richest people in the world are super unhappy because yeah, yeah you have a lot of money but it's just like you know your self-worth is so tied up in social media material, likes, things. material yeah. things houses cars whatever and i'm just like I drive a 2014 Honda. I love my car. You know I mean? So it's just like, Hondas are my, good yeah, my car is great. Dirty as hell. But it gets me from point A to point B and it's paid off. I mean, so it's just like, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, um, you know, I think self-worth is a big thing. And I think a lot, a lot of people, you know, struggle with that. And mm -hmm. me, me included. I'm not going to lie. Like, if I don't have... You know, I mean, there are times where I'm like, oh, man, like my social media is not popping off. I don't have any likes. Like, I don't have this. And it's just like, Meh. but it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, it that doesn't mean shit. It's just like, it shouldn't mean anything to you. Yeah. You know I mean, but it's just like, I don't know. But TikTok's amazing. I'm on it all the time. But, it, but it's <laughs> just like, you know, um, I think when it comes to likes and notifications and stuff, it's just like me included. It's just like, I, I just think. There are a lot of people out there that put a lot of emphasis on that, and they and they judge their own lives based mm -hmm. on social media. Because of course, everyone's going to put their best selves online. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just like, wouldn't it be funny if I just put all the negative stuff that happens to me, like getting a car accident, boom, where's my car? Flat tire, bam, or whatever. It's like, oh man, like I don't know, something crazy happened today, and this is, this is it. Like my mm -hmm. life. I mean. When 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 my son was a baby, like I really wanted to be like, this is what it's like having kids and showing him just like crying and screaming because I don't know his pacifier fell out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's just like you know, this is kids, not like oh the little outfits and this and that. But like, yeah, that you put them in outfits and shit. But like, but you know what? Five minutes after you snapped that picture, I'm sure they shit themselves or something. I mean, <laughs> and so, ruined the outfit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so it's just like you know, I I need to remind myself that. You know that my self worth does not come from social media; it comes from Luis. Yeah, uh, oh, so. that's a beautiful thing. Man. <laughs> I'm glad you shared that. It's a, it's definitely something that I think as a society we need to reflect more a little bit. But, you know, how much weight are you really putting into um, the feedback that you are getting off social media? Now, if you are trying to be a social media influencer, if that is what you are going after, one, be careful. Oh, yeah. Be careful because that is a very dark path, especially if you are going for content engagement and then are not seeing that engagement. It could, it could really tear you down. And I, I, that's why I think I love the idea of, of in influencers because it gives 
people the power. It gives it gives more power to people to really do something that you enjoy and then make some sort of living or career or, or it gives you another platform to yeah. to really kind of shine with your with what you enjoy doing. So with TikTok, there's a lot of people that know how to throw down in the kitchen. Yes, send me all your yeah, videos, exactly. post them. I want to yeah. see it. Right, right. You know, the, or the dance videos. Hey, I like to shimmy my shoulders a little <laughs> bit, you know. Yeah. I want to see it. So there's a lot of great things that can come out of it. Um, but when it comes to, you know, likes and how, the number of likes that you get. I know that Instagram was um, thinking about, or I'm not sure if they did. It's maybe a settings that you can switch onto your account. It's It takes away, it shows how many likes that you get. Or they were thinking about removing the number of likes or that like button they were thinking about taking it off. Um, but I, I think it's important. I think you have to have that sort of conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you are kind of, if you notice yourself relying on, on, okay, how many likes did I get? How many people are DMing me? Like are people Snapchatting me today? Like you need to have an understanding of, okay, what does that mean to me? What does a like mean to me? Yeah. What does a DM mean to me? Are people just, Hey, it was just the day busy day for everybody you know or no one reached out to me because i also didn't reach out to them you know it's it's i think connections are, are two ways yeah and so you always just take a step back to reflect a little bit mm -hmm. and analyze um what what effect social media is having on your life and i i think if it's something that is becoming a potential like problem and i don't want to say problem but if it's something that is could lead to something that is harmful for your mental health i think you need to analyze okay what does this mean to me like what is this content interaction what is this like what is this message mm -hmm. and and why do i put so much weight on it is it because i want likes and that's all i care about or is it because i want people to like me or want people to interact with me or talk with me and then from there, think of if it is that that case to think, OK, what can I do to get that from something other than social media? Yeah. You know, and I think you have to kind of have that that balance and positive um, options, I guess, for yourself. Yeah. You know? It's just like, you know, you. Um, yeah, you're right. Exactly what you just said. I mean, it's <laughs> like you you shouldn't put so much emphasis on like, oh, well, if you don't have any likes then your life's not fun or your life's not going well or whatever. And it's just like, it's no, it's not the case. I mean, so it's just like, and I, you know, it's just, I just hate the way social media is mm -hmm. and how it can be and how it, it, how it influences people and stuff like that. And it's just like, and I know for, for other p people, it's a little more detrimental and severe than others, but it's just yeah. like, I think at some point, any, anyone who has social media or is on social media has, has kind of, I, I would think it's kind of felt like, oh, you got like 30 likes, like, dang. Yeah. But I'm not exciting. Or, mm -hmm. or I mean, so it's just like, you know, you, your self-worth shouldn't come, shouldn't yeah. come from that. We, we, we become too judgmental of ourselves. It's, you post one picture of like, oh, this one got a lot of likes. You post another picture or why didn't this one get as many likes as the last one? Yeah. You know, what was about it? Maybe, oh, maybe they didn't like what I was wearing or they didn't like what I posted. They didn't like my comment. It, it's, we become too lost in social media the purpose of social media now this may be i may be wrong this may be something else but i think for me it's called social media to connect with other people mm -hmm. it's an, a platform for us to engage with other people now is it misused yes a hundred percent it is but I, I don't think we i mean and, and i think we're the guinea pigs obviously to social media and stuff like that we're just like Hey, we have this crazy new platform that's really cool and you can connect with other people and post about your lives and stuff like that. And so essentially we are the guinea pigs to see, okay, what effect does social media really have on people? But the problem is there's nobody putting in checks and balances. There's no one that helps you deal with the impact of social media, the impact of likes or dislikes or negative comments on your post or whatever i mean you think you see it all the time with a lot of people that post on youtube or post on instagram they get there's a ton of people that are you calling trolls or whatever that mm -hmm. just are so negative in your comments and they just want to just talk shit to you and like how do you deal with the weight of that you know and there's no rule book there's no professional on social media that is saying 
hey, this is how you handle that. This is how you have that separation between social media and your own mental health and the emphasis and the weight that you put into social media. Yeah, yeah, because there's no money in that. There's, yeah. there's no money in, in, in someone who's going to be like, oh, let me make this pleasant for everybody because that's why, that's how, you know, the creators of it or that's how influencers get their, they get paid. They get paid based off the, you know, the feedback, whether it's positive or negative. They get paid off of likes, whether it's, you know, or I mean, so it's just like, there's not going to be anything that's going to say, you know, this is how it should be because that the, no one's going to use it. And then once, mm-hmm. and if no one uses it, no one's going to make any money and no one's going to make any money. It's going to be gone. Yeah. I mean, so it's just like, you know, that's, that's all it is. And that's kind of what, what I have to remind myself too. It's just like, you know, just because you didn't get a message today doesn't mean that, you know, you're not interesting or you're not enough or you're not, you know, you're not a cool person to talk to or whatever. It's just like, I think honestly, just right now it's winter. It's, you know, single, lonely and stuff. You know, I think I said it earlier, I just want to <laughs> cuddle up with some cocoa and watch Harry Potter with someone. That's all I want to do. But it's just like, you know, but at the, at, at the end, hit him up. No. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, you have to learn what your self worth is. And then yeah. you have to, you know, feed yourself that and it's just like i see all these mantras and oh you should say these three things every morning and i'll say it for a day or two then i forget i'm like oh it's just another thing to do (laughs) but it's just like but i think it is powerful to do that and i think it is there are a lot of things i want to try to do i want to journal more i want to i want to meditate and this and that and just try to you know just get you know just get better mentally i yeah. mean I, I think i think there's still a long road ahead i don't think anyone's ever gonna be 100 percent no you know mental you know mental health wise but it's just like you know it's 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 a long journey and it's just like you know mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that i'm just excited for the for the new yeah. year i hope it brings a lot of uh a lot of prosperity not just for me but for everybody I, oh, I, yeah I, I think i think these last two years to me, have just blended together. Mm-hmm. It's just like COVID and everything that's happened between that and now. It's just like damn. So hopefully, 2022 is you know better. I know there's a lot of separation right now, and I'll, honestly, that's not going to go away. It's, that's no. never gone away. I think yeah, it's always been there. Yeah, it's funny because I think it's always it's always been there, and it's just more apparent now because mm-hmm. it's on social media and you can see yeah. it. I mean, but people are more vocal about it too. You know. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I just, I just to kind of further emphasize what you were saying there, it's, you know, we, I, I hope for better times and in this upcoming year, it's, um, been difficult. It's been a tough two years for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, um, damn, I didn't think I was going to bring this up. Um, a friend of mine that I went to, uh, high school with, and I, I believe middle school, high school. Uh, she was the sweetest girl that uh, you uh, nicest girl you've ever met. And unfortunately with the pandemic, uh, depression uh, started to get to her and it was something that became unbearable. And unfortunately she wasn't able to get her medication and, and everything that she needed to help. And unfortunately she took her life and that it's like check in on people, you know? And I think that's, for me, it was a, another reminder of like why I'm doing this podcast. It's because, um, you know, we need each other more than ever. And it's take care of yourself, you know, take care of your friends, your family. Uh, make sure you have good people around you, good supportive people yeah. around you, because times are already hard enough. Don't make life harder for yourself. Yeah. You know, and um yeah, it, it's. It, I mean, I, I hope that we we have some better times uh, coming up in this this next year here. The world's a it's a crazy place, but it's also a beautiful place. And unfortunately, all the negativity is getting shown more, and the negativity is more emphasized now more than anything. But there's so much positivity, and there's so much beauty to this life that we have. So I mean, just hold on to it, cherish it, and just spread more positivity. And I hope that's what we we are doing here. And I hope that um, whoever is listening, if there is someone listening, and if you 
can take something from this or if this was a, a positive aspect in your day or, if, you know, you enjoy listening to us. We hope you do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's we, we just have to be there for one another a little bit more. Just take care of each other. And um, I don't know, just just make your space a better a better space. You know, have some more positivity in your life. If there's neg- negative people there, you know, establish that boundary, separate yourself from that and check in, check in on someone. If there's someone that's been on your mind, you haven't reached out to them in a little bit, chat them, see how they're doing, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope to see just some more positivity kind of happening in this world because this negativity, if it continues, it's, it's going to be harmful for a lot of people, man. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you need to check in on people around you and stuff. And that's why you need to reevaluate con- continually, continuously reevaluate your circle and mm-hmm. reevaluate who's around you, who you're letting close to you, who you're talking to and you know, if they're not giving you po- positive vibes, you got to do something about it. I mean, yeah. so it's just like, well, whether it's cutting that person off or whether it's talking to them about it or whatever you, you need to do. But I think just right now, I mean, I think just, just in, 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 in general, we all need that connection. We all, we all need, mm-hmm. you know, you know, for me, to be honest, I wouldn't have, have, have gone through or gotten through the whole pandemic and moving in by myself if it wasn't for you know call of duty and playing with my boys at night every you know, <laughs> yeah, you know plagues baby i mean but it's just <laughs> like you know it's it got it got me through because it was just like it was, it was something to look forward to mm-hmm. and it's friends i haven't talked to in a while and now we talk almost every day yeah i mean even if we're not playing the game we're still chatting you know texting each, each other and stuff and it's awesome and so it's just like mm-hmm. it's just it's just Check in on on your people. Reevaluate your people. Yeah. You know if if you feel that someone isn't you know giving you that that that, that positivity that, that that you need or giving you what you need in general, cut them loose. Yeah. I mean, but I I hope that you know I have high hopes for this podcast next year too. I hope we we get to big things, but it's oh, just yeah. like you know I just, um. Just for now, just thank you for everyone who's listened so far, who's 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 been a part of our community, and you know, just you know, if you, if you, if you, if there's anyone that this made you think of, send it to them, have them listen to it, um, and I just appreciate everything. I'm so uh, uh, grateful to be able to do this and be a part of this, and um, I'm excited for for what's next. But yeah, I'm just really just thank you to everybody. Yeah, I mean, uh, like we were kind of saying in the beginning, I mean, just the feedback, the support, you know, we are probably well over 100 downloads by now. So thank you guys for all for, you know, the support and and the engagement that you have given us for this podcast so far. Um, You know, we hope that we are at least having some positive impact on your life. If you are listening to this, this is, uh, you know, something that we are passionate about. We want any feedback that you guys may have. Um, we just ultimately want to create a, a positive space and a and a better world for us to live in and, and for our kids and, and everything like that. So um, thank you guys for all just joining along in this process. We appreciate your support and this just continue going with this and just get better and, and, and have some more exciting things for, to, for us to share with you guys. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, that's it. Just thanks for listening. I hope hope this has touched somebody. Um, you know, I hope this makes someone thinks, hope it makes someone think, I think about their other circle or their family or whatever, and just, just reevaluate, just always, always, mm-hmm. always reevaluate and reflect and think back. And, um, yeah, I think that, that about wraps it up for episode three and we will episode threes in the books. Oh well, yeah. We'll see you next time. All right. Y'all take care. Um, and, and we'll see you next time. All right. All right.